Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. We have come to the end of another part in the epic saga that is the Stormlight Archive. Part two of Words of Radiance, Winds Approach. Um, if you have been following along with the daily videos, I try to upload a video every weekday. Uh, if you've been following along with those one-minute videos, I commend you. Thank you for your perseverance. But here, you get the whole part. This is 22 chapters, 181 pages, all in one video. Uh, so... Oh, actually, no, it's not 22 chapters. There's going to be a few taken out of there because I'm not going to do the flashbacks. Actually, I wonder, should I do a, a, a super cut of this part with the flashbacks or without the flashbacks? Before, I always took the flashbacks out, and then I started thinking, like, well, maybe some people just want to watch the whole part with all the flashbacks. I don't, maybe I'll do one of each. I don't know. Maybe I'll just, I'll just duplicate this little introduction. I'll put it on both. We'll do one of each. Why not? I don't know. Anywho... Uh, I think that's all I was going to say. This in, Enjoy part two, Wind's Approach of the Words of Radiance. Here you go. Shalon is riding with Tavlak, the slaver, and his mercenary assistants, Bluth and Tag, and she's trying to hide the fact that her dress is all tattered and her feet are injured, so she demands to ride in the cage in the back with the, with the sides pulled up. So she's back there talking to Pattern, and we learn that he was sent to this realm uh, because of the danger that's looming over mankind, and he was drawn to Shalon because of lies. Shalon doesn't really understand what he means, so he says, remember, and then she thinks about what happened back in chapter 10, but then she's like, yeah, how about not, and she pushes that memory away. Uh, uh, Pattern tells her that sometimes humans' minds break, but Shalon's didn't break, it just cracked, and the lies are what actually saved her, and... Uh, also drew him to her in the first place. Shalon asks and Pattern confirms that the Voidbringers will return. He calls them Spren of Him, who Him is, we don't know yet. And Shalon is starting to think that the group that her father and Kabzal were a part of must have been behind the assassination of Yasna and that they must be trying to control information about the knowledge of the Voidbringers coming back and all this sort of stuff. So Shalon plans to stop them. Adolin is getting ready for his first official duel of honor in order to hopefully win some shard blades away from the high princes who are opposing Dalinar. Now, Renarin and Navani come and visit him in the staging room, and he asks about Yasna's ship, which is a week behind schedule, but Navani kind of shrugs it off. She's really not too worried about it. As Adolin puts on his armor, he and Renarin are talking about their new bodyguards, and he admits that he just doesn't trust Kaladin. There's something off about that guy. I'm suspicious of him. I don't know what's going on. Uh, now, since bouts for shards are quite rare, the arena is packed. Everybody wants to see this. Adolin is dueling this guy named Salinor, who's one of High Prince Thanadel's shard bearers. As the duel begins, they take up their stances, and it's customary to start pretty cautiously, kind of moving around each other, testing blows, feeling out your opponent. Um, the duel is compared to a dance multiple times throughout the chapter, but after a minute, Adolin's like, screw this, we're at war, and he attacks full force, beats the crap out of this guy. The judge is screaming at him that his behavior is improper, but he didn't really break any rules, so he wins a shard blade, and he gives it to Renarin. While stopped for the night, Shalon sends Pattern to go spy on Tavlakf and Tag. He comes back and perfectly imitates their voices. Through this, Shalon learns that Tavlakf is planning on selling her back to whoever is evidently missing her. So she goes and talks to him and she tells him, I'm actually set to be betrothed to someone important at the Shattered Plains. And once we get there, I will reward you handsomely for having rescued me. He doesn't really believe her, so she tries a different tactic. She gets really bold and she's like, listen, man, you have no idea what kind of storm you've stumbled into and you better not freaking mess with me. Uh, so he looks at her really shocked and she realizes that she's kind of glowing. She accidentally used some stormlight and uh, her dress is no longer torn and stained. So she walks away really quickly and she also realizes that her feet are not really hurting anymore. Just then, Bluth, the other mercenary, comes rushing into camp, says that he spotted some bandits nearby. From what he saw, they're most likely deserters from the Shattered Plains, which are like the worst kind of ruffians to run into in the wild. So uh, Tavlakf orders them to hitch up the wagons and roll out. Bridge 4 is at the practice grounds in order to guard the Colon Princes as they spar in practice with their shard blades. Uh, Moash asks about this guy Amaram who's just arrived and Kaladin reveals a bit more about his backstory that we already know. Moash is all upset. He's like, are we going to get revenge on Amram and Sadius or what? Kaladin just kind of nods and Moash says, good enough for me and he walks away. Uh, Adolin and Renarin arrive. Kaladin and Adolin kind of get into an argument and Adolin tells him, hey, the only reason I haven't thrown you out of a window is because you saved my life during the Battle of the Tower, but my patience with you won't extend as far as my father's. So know your place, bridge boy. 
Uh, Syl tells Kaladin that she does not like anybody who carries a shard blade. They are an abomination, except when used by the Knights Radiant in ancient times. Kaladin asks her, well, where did they come from in the first place? The blades and the plate. But she says she can't tell him. Uh, Kaladin uh, then meets Zahel, the swordmaster, who is going to be training Renarin. Renarin, because of some vague health issues, is like way behind the curve. He's never really practiced before. And then we find out that Syl is like a small piece of a god or something? Shalon and the boys stop to cook lunch, and they see a thin trail of smoke behind them, so apparently the bandits are following, but they've also stopped to cook some food. Then they see more smoke out in front, and Shalon thinks it's probably a larger merchant caravan, and so she insists that they head straight for it. Then she stops to review what she knows about Spren and magic. One, the Knights Radiant form some sort of symbiotic relationship with Spren. Two, Spren have access to surges. And three, she herself has access to illumination, which is the ability to manipulate light. Uh, Then she learns that she can intentionally intake stormlight by uh, inhaling sharply, but she doesn't really know how to actively use it, so it just diffuses until she realizes that it's also healing her feet, so that's cool. Uh, She learns that Pattern is a scholar, and he plans to learn as much as he can about humans before Shallan kills him. What? She's like, what are you talking about? And he says, yeah, the Knights Radiant killed their spren when they broke their oaths on the Day of Recreants. She's like, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. Besides, I'm not even a Knight Radiant. He reminds her, "Uh, you've taken oaths, and then she's shocked to realize that she does have a vague memory of speaking the first ideal. Kaladin is at the dueling grounds. Now there's a high storm due tonight. Kaladin's a little worried about it because during the last two high storms, Dalinar has awoken from his visions to find those mysterious numbers on the wall, and they are counting down. Zahel is training Renarin with his shard plate, and he has him jump off the roof a bunch of times, and then he starts talking to Kaladin about his duties as a leader and how to defend against the shard bearer. They start to spar a little bit. Zahel is really tricky, very skilled, but Kaladin won't admit that he could actually learn something from him. Just as the fight is winding down, Adolin arrives and joins in, kind of picking on Kaladin, who loses his temper and physically attacks Adolin. Adolin's got his shard plate on, so he injures Kaladin with his his augmented strength. Kaladin uses some stormlight to recover, but then Zahel uh, stops the fight, and Kaladin suddenly feels really drained like the stormlight left him. Zahel compliments Kaladin's skills and uh, tells him that he's just as stubborn as Adolin. Of course, Kaladin disagrees with that. As Zahel leaves, Syl arrives, and Kaladin tells her how the Stormlight left him, and she says, yeah, you were fighting angry. You weren't protecting anybody. So then he tries to use the Stormlight again, and it works like usual this time. Shallan and the boys approach the column of smoke, and they see that it's an innocent merchant caravan that has recently been attacked. Some of the wagons are burning, but others are safe, and there are some survivors. Uh, behind Shallan, they see through a spyglass that the other group is in fact a bunch of military deserters, so that's very dangerous. Tavlak wants to flee so that the deserters will attack the merchants. Uh, but Shallan says that they should join forces with the merchants to team up against the deserters. Suddenly, a scout from the merchants appears uh, from where they were hiding and says that their attackers ran away when the fire broke out, but they're sure to return soon. So now Shallan's small group and this caravan have to face down the deserters and the other bandits. Just then, the sun goes down and arrows start to fall on the caravan. So Shallan immediately takes command. Uh, she commands Tavlax to take tag and help the caravan while she and Bluth jump on a wagon and head for the approaching deserters. Uh, Shallan tells the deserters, which include Gaz, that if they help save the caravan from the other bandits, that she will see that their crimes get erased and they can start over as heroes. It's a pretty hard sell, but she is able to convince them to join in the fight. In the battle between the merchant caravan and the deserters, Bluth died. It's like one of the saddest and most bittersweet deaths of a minor character I've ever read. Uh, Shallan then meets with Makob and Tin, who are the leaders of the merchant caravan, and they agree to take her to the Shattered Plains. After that, Vatha, who is this kind of bad guy leader of the deserters, he starts threatening Shallan, telling her that, Her word means nothing. As soon as we get back to the Shattered Plains, they're just going to execute us for deserting and all this stuff. Pattern helps her get away from him. Then Shallan demands that Tavlak give her his five slaves as payment for having saved him. Um, He doesn't want to, of course, but then she cajoles cajoles him into it. Uh, Then she sets the slaves free, tells them that they're they're free to leave, but if they stick around, she'll pay them well. Uh, Then Shallan buys a wagon from Tavlak. The deserters show some honor by burning the dead bodies, and the caravaneers uh, give them... A, a thanks prayer to burn uh, as well. Now I'm going to go puke. Kaladin is on guard duty at, during a high storm at the Royal Palace. He's with Elokar, Adolin, and Renarin, while Dalinar and Navani are in a separate room. After the high storm's over, Dalinar comes back in, and they're kind of talking about their situation. He's been trying to convince Amaram to secede from Sadius's princedom, but apparently Amaram keeps trying to get Dalinar and Sadius to make up. 
As he's leaving the palace, Kaladin opens up and he tells Dalinar what Amram did to him back in the day. Dalinar asks him for evidence, but, you know, other than the guys who helped him commit that atrocity, nobody else knows about what Amram did. So Dalinar says, well, without proof, there's nothing I can really do, but I'll talk to him. Uh, Kaladin's kind of frustrated that Dalinar doesn't seem to believe him. Syl tries to help him feel better, but of course Kaladin's not exactly known for being understanding towards the Light Eyes. He gets back to camp and Shen, the Parshman, asks him, hey, am I really a part of Bridge 4? Kaladin says yes, but he says... But then Shen says, well, why can't I have a spear? Kaladin doesn't really have a good answer for that. And Shen says, I'm still a slave. Just then, Natam, another member of Bridge 4, comes running into camp, huffing and puffing, and says, The king! An assassin! Kaladin returns to the palace to find that, other than a gash on his forehead, Elokar is fine. Elokar compliments Kaladin for hurrying to help while criticizing Idrin, who's the captain of the king's guard, for having allowed a, an assassination attempt to even have occurred. Uh, Kaladin learns from his men that Elokar had been on his balcony when the railing had given way and he almost fell 100 feet to the ground below. Uh, Kaladin looks at the railing and he sees that the footings had come loose from the mountings, something that really shouldn't have happened without a lot of force pulling on it. But then he sees that a crucial joint in the metal had also been cleanly cut. Uh, Dalinar approaches and after talking, both Kaladin and Dalinar determine that the assassins are most likely cowards that want the king's death to look like an accident. Uh, Dalinar looks at the cut part and he says that could only be done with a shard blade. So that narrows down their list of suspects considerably. Dalinar asks Kaladin if he can truly trust him, and Kaladin swears that he can. Dalinar tells him he's going to relieve Idrin and appoint Kaladin to that position. He wants the king to be guarded exclusively by former bridgemen who won't be swayed by war camp politics. So now Kaladin has even more responsibility. The deserters have quickly become loyal to Shallan, but Vatha continues being very antagonistic toward her. Uh, she's looking through Yasna's notebooks, reading about the location of Urithiru, and it, she sees that it's supposed to be up in the mountains somewhere. The Shattered Plains form a part of a basin, so it's probably not there, but the Shattered Plains have never been fully explored. Pattern shows up, and Shallan talks to him about Spren and stuff, so we learn that inanimate objects perceive themselves the way they are because people have considered them that way for so long. Uh, Spren in the physical realm would have no thought or consciousness without humans. Uh, Pattern refers to Voidbringers as others, as in non-humans, who can think. Therefore, they generate their own Spren. And Spren are shattered power, fragments of honor, cultivation, and odium. Now, Tin invites Shallan to dine with her. She doesn't believe that Shallan is who she claims to be. Uh, she thinks Shallan is pulling some sort of a con, but is in over her head. So Tin is also a con woman, and she offers to help Shallan in exchange for part of the profit. Tin says she has powerful allies in the Shattered Plains. Shallan tells her that she knows something about Dalinar. Tin thinks she's trying to blackmail the Blackthorn, and Shallan doesn't bother to correct her. The boys from Bridge 4 are taking horseback riding lessons, and to say that they're struggling would really be an understatement. Uh, there's a pretty funny scene where Kaladin rides this really wild horse that no one's been able to handle, but he uses Stormlight to lash himself to the saddle, so he's able to stay in and everyone's shocked. But then he gets bucked off at the end anyway, so it's pretty funny. He interviews a few of the different guards and guys that were on duty during... Um, uh, during the assassination attempt of Elokar, Natam tells him, yeah, I didn't see anything suspicious. I don't know what happened. Kaladin starts thinking about that balcony, how it must have been sabotaged after the high storm because if the railing were cut before the storm, then the storm itself would have torn it free from the balcony. Uh, and so he asks Natam, well, who was on the balcony between the storm and Elokar nearly falling? And Natam says, you know, Moash went out there, which is weird because Moash was supposed to be off duty. Uh, so Kaladin starts thinking, well, Mosh has always been sort of an enigma, right? He's like the best fighter, the fastest learner. Could he have done this? And then he reprimands himself for even thinking of suspecting one of his friends. Adolin and Renarin go on a plateau assault with a guy named Yakimov because they're trying to help Dalinar's cause by showing some cooperation with the other Alethi. Adolin and Yakimov are on the front lines, and when they get to the chrysalis, they find that it's already been broken open and the gem heart is gone. Now, the Parshendi couldn't have done this so quickly without a shard blade, so Adolin is looking around and he sees that same Parshendi shard bearer that fought with Dalinar during the Battle of the Tower. So he attacks, but the Parshendi just slaps his blade away and starts speaking to him in Alethi. And then the Parshendi lifts his faceplate, and Adolin is shocked to see that it's a woman. At least he thinks it is. She says she wants to speak with Dalinar and that she'll send a messenger later. Then she leaves with her army. Now, while all of this was happening, Renarin was down uh, at the bottom of the hill uh, with his guards, and some Parshendi tried to seize a bridge. Renarin insisted on helping, so he charged forward. He summoned his shard blade, but then he just stood there frozen, and his guards had to drag him away to safety. Later, Adolin is talking with Yakimov, and we learn that someone, probably Sadius, has been making special promises to shard bearers who refuse to duel Adolin. Then Yakimov recommends that Adolin challenge a guy named Araniv because he's really boastful and he'll probably accept. Tin is giving Shallan pointers on how to become a better con artist as they ride toward the Shattered Plains. As they draw near the plains, they meet a group of men on horseback wearing blue uniforms, and we get to see Shallan meet Kaladin for the first time. Unexpectedly, Tin presents Shallan as a horn-eater princess, 
and uh, Shallan is just forced to play along with it. Kaladin informs them that he's from the personal guard of Dalinar Kolin and that he's investigating ways of preventing bandit attacks in the area around the Shattered Plains. Shallan recognizes the name of her potential future father-in-law and immediately regrets pretending to be royalty from the Horn Eater Peaks. Kaladin doesn't seem to believe her, and so she decides she just needs to double down. The first chance she gets, she starts yelling at him, saying that he's offended her, and she demands that he give her his boots as an apology. Uh, at first, Kaladin can't believe what he's hearing, but Shallan and Tin as well just become more and more vehement until he concedes. So flustered and frustrated, he gets out of there the first chance he gets, but he leaves bootless. Amaram talks with Sadius and he expresses concerns about Sadius's tactics and general attitude. He warns that Alethkar needs to be strong for what is coming and advocates for cooperation with the Colins. Sadius argues that he plans to make Alethkar strong by force. Sadius and his wife attend Adolin's duel against Araniv and they talk about their schemes. They talk about how to weaken Dalinar's reputation by exploiting the fact that Dalinar should have involved Sadius, who is High Prince of Information, in the investigation of the recent assassination attempt. Sadius muses about how, out of respect for old King Gal Gavilar, he'll probably need to slit King Elokar's throat himself, after Dalinar has been taken care of. The duel continues and Adolin is not doing too well. Soon Sadius realizes that Adolin is pretending to be worse than he actually is. He doesn't want to show his true skill because that will discourage others from dueling him. Adolin actually wins, but makes it look like it was more due to luck than to skill. Sadius is actually impressed and tells Eli, his wife, to stop pressuring the Shardbearers. Let them duel Adolin if they want. Sadius wants to see how this plays out. Gaz asks Shallan to draw a portrait of him, and she does so, making him look a little bit more distinguished and handsome than he is in real life. Gaz asks if that's what he really looks like, and Shallan says yes. Pattern buzzes appreciatively. It's a lie, but it's also a truth, because the merchants that Gaz helped save from the bandits, they saw him as a noble hero. Uh, Shallan does that thing where she doesn't really think, she just draws, and she ends up sketching a rocky shoreline with some people washed up from the ocean, and one of them is Yalb. Next, Tin shows up, and they start talking about their plans for when they get to the Shattered Plains. Uh, Shallan tells her that she's going to pose as Adolin Colin's betrothed in order to scam Dalinar Colin. Tin doesn't know that Shallan really is Adolin's betrothed. Um, <clears throat> Tin gives her some pointers. She tells her to try to be as independent as possible, try to be a little bit self-sufficient, don't depend on the Colins completely. Um, Shallan is worried about how she's going to seal a deal on this betrothal without Yasna there to push for it. She really needs the Colin family in order to save her family. She needs to get to the bottom of the mystery about Urithiru and the Voidbringers, and now she needs to figure out a way to deal with Tin. Kaladin returns from patrol duty back to the Bridge 4 barrack with 40 men selected from the other former bridge crews. These men will be trained to be sergeants to, uh, in turn, teach and encourage the other former bridge men in the other barracks. So Kaladin looks around for Teft, but nobody seems to know where he's at. Then we cut to Tin, who's helping Shallan practice palming spheres. She's sort of lecturing her, telling her that she's going to have to learn how to do some really difficult things, like expose her safe hand, <gasps> um, and much worse if she wants to be a successful scammer. Tin tells Shallan that the king of Yaakoved was recently killed by the assassin in white, along with his son and six other high princes. So Shallan is worried about her family back in Yaakoved. Tin, Tin tells her that she's going to be receiving more information via span read and that she'll keep Shallan posted. Kaladin has a dream vision thing that he's riding the High Storm, and the Stormfather speaks to him and tells him that Syl should not trust Kaladin as he's just going to kill her and leave her corpse to wicked men. S uh, Kaladin sees another storm with red lightning approaching from the opposite direction. Syl tells him that he is coming. Kaladin can feel something is wrong, so he rushes to the Colins. He tells them to get the king to safety. As they're traveling through the palace, they come upon a hallway where all the spheres have gone dark, and there's a big hole cut in the wall. The assassin in white is there. So they start fighting. Uh, Zeth sticks Adel into the ceiling. At one point, he takes a swing and Kaladin instinctively blocks and he gets his, 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 the store, the shard blade goes right through Kaladin's arm and his, his hand is now dead and lifeless. Uh, Dalinar tells Zeth, you can't have the king. And Zeth is like, I'm not here for him. I'm here for you. And then Kaladin tackles Zeth. They both fall out of that hole cut in the wall out into the night. Kaladin and Zeth fall from the hole in the palace wall to the stone ground below. Kaladin starts healing his injuries with Stormlight, and he's even able to revive his dead hand. Zeth is in awe that Kaladin is even still alive. He asks him, what are you? And Kaladin's like, same thing as you. I'm a windrunner. Uh, and then Zeth starts ranting and raving about how this is impossible. I was named Truthless and blah, blah, blah. Uh, he asks Kaladin, are they all back? And Kaladin doesn't really know what he's talking about, but he says yes anyway. Then Zeth flees the scene. 
Kaladin returns to the king's chambers, and everybody is shocked to see that he's still alive. They ask him how he did it, and he evades the question. They basically chalk it up to the assassin's mysterious powers. Then Dalinar asks him how did he know that an attack was imminent? And again, Kaladin tries to avoid the question. He says that he saw a light, and he acted on instinct. Syl doesn't really like this answer, but it's not necessarily a lie, because he did see Syl's light when she came to warn him. Uh, then Kaladin finds Hobber, whose legs have been sliced through with Zeth's blade. Kaladin comforts him and says he'll always be a part of Bridge 4. He can cook with rock. Shallan is in Tin's tent, and they're receiving a report via span read from one of Tin's informants, who writes a little bit about the political situation in Yaqoved, making Shallan worry about her family even more. Then the informant writes that the mission was a success and Yasna Kolin is dead. Shallan realizes that Tin was involved in Yasna's assassination. She's shocked, but then the span read continues, describing Yasna's new ward. Tin immediately realizes that it's talking about Shallan, and she attacks her. Pattern imitates Yasna's voice behind Tin to distract her a little bit, but it only gives Shallan a momentary advantage. Shallan uses a little bit of story Stormlight to project an image between herself and Tin. Uh, Tin thinks she's going crazy. She says she, she's seeing things and hearing things that aren't there. She pulls out her sword. She's about to kill Shallan when a shard blade appears in Shallan's hand and she stabs it through Tin's guest. Uh, then Shallan sees that the span read is still writing. It's still connected to the informant. The informant says that uh, Tin's benefactors, the Ghostbloods, have another job for her to do and asks if she wants to set up an appointment with them at the Shattered Plains. Shallan replies with a single word, yes. Now, wasn't that marvelous? Wasn't that just wonderful? Didn't you love that? Uh, stick around, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot more Stormlight Archive to come. I'm only one-third of the way through... I should say we. We are only one-third of the way through the second book. And uh, Brandon's working on writing book five right now. So there's a, there's a lot of this still to come. So hope you're subscribed. If you're not, whatever. Do it if you want. Don't. If do, YouTubers are always like, like, comment, subscribe. Do what you want to do, man. You don't have to. You don't have to like or comment or subscribe. But I do like it when you guys comment. I like talking to you guys. Why am I still here? Why am I talking? See ya.